This video is a KuCoin tutorial. I'm gonna go through the entire system, getting set up on here and trading crypto on here. Let's get started. I'll leave the KuCoin link in the description. They often give trading bonuses and sign up bonuses if you're new, so check the details via the link below. Uh, once we've set up an account right here, you just need an email address. You can come to trade now. The first thing we want to do with KuCoin is just look at the reserve ratio or the proof of reserves. It's very popular right now for exchanges to show you that they have the reserves that they say they have so you can see this right here directly on KuCoin as you can see here the latest audit over 100% reserves for the client assets. You can also verify this periodically as well if you wanna come down and press verify now. Uh, once you have an account, you can press this and then you can go through and it will show you what reserves they have in all of their public wallets. You can also use third party sites like DeFi Llama. Just click on KuCoin right here and you can see all of the assets that they're holding and if they're going up or down over time, including the breakdown of the assets. So I'll leave uh, details to that as well in the description. Make sure to set up your security properly as well. Once you have an account, just come up to your dashboard right here and then click on this top line. This will take you through to the, um, you know, the user profile. Now, the first thing is uh, we want to bind Google verification or some sort of two-factor authentication right here. Don't use SMS verification, it's not safe. Use Google Authenticator, download that on your phone or whatever, and you can link it up right here and it'll give you a six-digit six code. Also, a quick tip with Google verification, once you get this code, there should be a long code, like a number that you can input. Write that down somewhere and keep that safe. If you lose your phone and so you lose your 2FA, you you can just reload the same on a different device. So write that down when you get it right there. Also, we want to tip this on as well, which is pay fees with KCS. You get a 20% discount if you just pay fees in KCS token. So what you do is you buy some KCS token, you only need like $10 worth. And then if you have fees that, you know, maybe cost like 45 cents when you trade, that 45 cents will be paid in KCS token. Uh, so you get that 20% discount. Now KCS is a risk asset. And it can go up and down in value as well. So just make sure that you're happy owning some of that to get that 20% discount. Once we start trading as well, you will need a trading password. So you can input this password and then you can trade freely for a few hours. After a few hours, it resets and you need to input the password again. It's just um, another security method to make sure that if your account gets hacked, no one can trade anything without your say so. So this trading password is like a four to six digit pin. So you can input that as well. KuCoin works on a set of different accounts that we need assets in if we wanna use them in a specific way. So we have the assets overview here. We can come to the wallet icon and then just choose the overview and we have these. So when you transfer assets into KuCoin, they'll all be in your main account and then you can transfer them out to the different accounts as to how you wanna use them. So the trading account is where we would buy crypto like Bitcoin and sell it and we can transfer assets in. So we'll transfer assets from our main account and then we'll go to the trading account here, choose the asset that you want to you know, transfer in and out, and then the amount like this, and then that will be transferred from your main over to your trading account. Completely free internal transfer will happen instantly for you. Don't pay anything for that. How to deposit fiat currency onto KuCoin. We can press the deposit option right here, and it takes us through to this page. Now, depending on which currency you use, there may be different options. For example, in Brazil, you can actually use PIX and have a 0% fee bank transfer straight in. So that's easy. For other fiat currencies like dollar, it's just Visa MasterCard into KuCoin. Now you can see the fee right here is around 3.8%. It is quite high. It's high on most exchanges if you wanna use a card. If you wanna deal with fiat currency either on or out of KuCoin, you do need KYC. So you need to verify your ID and the address needs to match up with the bank details that you're sending it to or the card. So you need to do that right here. If you wanna trade crypto and just deposit and withdraw crypto and never touch fiat currency, you don't need KYC for now. The other option is to use a third party. So we can come up to buy crypto and then third party here. This uses Apple Pay or a bank transfer. It depends on the third party. So as you can see, the payment channel is Simplex. These are a very popular third party provider that many exchanges use. And so you go and register an account with Simplex, you can send money into Simplex, and then they put that back right into your KuCoin account, it links up. And so you can use Apple Pay or bank transfer here, depending on where you are. You can see wires or ACH, depends on the currency, of course. So let's say we wanna buy $100 right here. We wanna switch that directly into BTC. You can see right here, you pay $105. 
um, and you get this much BTC. Now, the fees are going to be quite high right here. So let's choose another one like US dollar tether. A lot of people use USDT to trade futures or just to have. So we can see the fees. We pay out $100 and then we receive around 96.94. So let's say we're paying around 3 point something percent uh, to get money on, right? So the fees are a little bit high for here, unfortunately, which is why a lot of people actually will just use uh, another exchange to you know, get fiat on and off ramps on there and then just deposit crypto into KuCoin because trading fees are lower and they have access to more coins. There is another way to buy and sell crypto on KuCoin, which is the fast trade or peer to peer method. So we can click on fast trade here. Now, what we're doing is using third party providers. So these are, you know, maybe uh, other traders who have different currencies and you can essentially use KuCoin as an escrow service, as a middleman to match up what you want to buy and sell. Now you can do this in the fast trade option. And as you can see here, if I've got some dollars, I can spend some dollars and then I get around $95 worth of USDT and I can pay with Visa or MasterCard here or I can actually use a transfer wise or one of the other options. It depends at the current time what the offers are in the peer to peer market. So you're actually trading with a third party, some other trader, KuCoin's like a middleman and escrow here. Now you can actually sell these out as well. So let's say you have $100 of USDT and you wanna take that out to US dollars or whatever your currency is. You can see the options right here. So let's say I want to actually get dollars in my TransferWise account. I can press this and then it's gonna link me up with other um, traders who have dollars who want USDT. So we can search more here and you can see all of the different options, Revolut, Cash App, that maybe people can send dollars to you. Now, if we go to the peer-to-peer -peer market, this essentially shows that market in greater detail. So as an example, let's say we want to sell some US dollar tether and we wanna get some dollars out. As you can see, there's some options right here. So we want to choose maybe the Cash App option. And so we can see 1.02. So essentially they're taking a 2% fee on those US dollars and there may be some other fees involved as well. But what will happen here is that essentially you send the US dollar tether to them on KuCoin as an escrow. KuCoin will keep that US dollar, US dollar tether in escrow. They will then send the US dollar to you via your cash app. They'll give KuCoin the transaction details and then only when the transaction is confirmed that you get the dollars, uh, KuCoin will then take the US dollar tether out of your account into their KuCoin account. So KuCoin's a middleman, a kind of escrow service here. You do need ID verification here as well. Um, and you know people can use this as they want. The limits are fairly low. Uh, so that's why a lot of people use other exchanges, for example, Coinbase, because they have better fiat currency options, but KuCoin maybe has more products and coins for what they want to trade how to deposit and withdraw crypto. We can come to our assets overview again, come to either deposit or withdraw. If we click on deposit, it does take us to the fiat option. So I just go over to deposit crypto here and it gives us the options. So deposit crypto, we need to choose the asset that we want to deposit in. So I'm gonna choose Bitcoin, then it's gonna give me a network. So we'll click this and you can see there are a few different networks supported. So these ones are suspended for right now, so we can't use those but we can use the Bitcoin network itself. So let's click on BTC here and it gives us our Bitcoin address. So what we can do now is copy that address and paste it in the wallet or exchange that we wanna send it from. So let's go over to our Binance and what we can do is send Bitcoin, paste the address in here and then make sure the network is the exact same network. So we're choosing the Bitcoin network because that's what we wanna send Bitcoin over. So we just send that to the address that we got on our KuCoin screen. If you want to withdraw, then just come over to withdraw right here. Choose the asset that you want to withdraw, whatever that is. So let's go USDT. Then we need the wallet, wallet address. So you'd come over to your Binance or your Trust Wallet or your Ku Wallet, whatever it is, get the address in there, um, paste it in the wallet address, then make sure the networks match up. So whichever asset that you're withdrawing or, or uh, depositing, just make sure you're using the same network on both ends and that will go through. You will have to pay a small blockchain fee for doing this because it is using the blockchain. Now an overview of the spot trading market where you can get much better trades and you can get granular detail for your trading. Come to spot trading here. It's gonna open up the more professional screen and I'll go through this right now. So on the top left, 
we have the asset that is currently shown on screen and that we can trade. So as I said with that trading password, if I just get myself out the way, you can see down here, you can input your trading password. And so you'll need to do that every time that you trade. Uh, it's gonna be open for a few hours. So I'm just gonna put mine in and then you can see the options box right now. It comes up and we can trade. So up on the top left, we can choose the assets that we wanna trade. So if we wanna trade Bitcoin, we can search BTC and we can see all of the assets that Bitcoin trades against. So we have Bitcoin US dollar tether, that's the main pair. If you wanna trade it against other stable coins, for example, USDC is a stable coin, DAI is a stable coin and you wanna trade it against that, you can do. Or we can search for other assets like ETH and then it will show us all the trading pairs that we have for ETH right here. So at the moment we are trading Bitcoin, US dollar tether. We've got the price and some trading details here that you can see. Now on the right hand side, we have the order book. These are where all of the uh, market orders are right now. So this price in the middle right here is the what's called the mid price. It's the actual price that uh, Bitcoin is trading at at the moment. If the uh, last traded price is higher, then it goes green. And if the last traded price is lower than previous, then it goes red, indicating a sale. So this mid price is really your kind of reference price when you wanna trade, and that's what you'll be trading at. Now, anything below this, these are bids from buyers that are below the current price. So these guys are trying to get a better deal. They're putting in a bid at a little bit of a lower price and hoping the price kind of fluctuates down to their level. And of course the opposite for sellers, these guys are trying to sell a little bit higher and are offering out their Bitcoin at a higher price, trying to hope the market goes up a bit and they can sell a bit higher. Now on the right hand side, we have all these recent trades. These are each of the individual trades. So you can see the actual price and the amount that's been traded not like a massive amount of information here. Market depth also shows you um, kind of how much volume there is on one side of the order book. So right now you can see that there's a lot more volume on the sell side than there is on the buy side right here. Uh, again, this changes very quickly. And so you can't just say, well, the price is going down because there's more sellers. It changes very quickly over time as orders come in. So as you can see, just right there, there's now more buyers on the order book. So you can look at that as you want. Um, now down at the bottom, this is where all of your orders will be, which we'll see in a second. You can see your assets overview here as well. Um, so you can toggle this on and off. Now your main account may have some balances. Here's your trading account. You can deposit or transfer from right here. So if you have you know, money in your main account that you wanna put over to your trading account, just transfer it right here, it'll bring that box up. As you can see here, you can make those transfers instantly. Now on the right hand corner, if you can see this, this is where we input all of our orders, which we'll get onto in a second. Now as for the chart, as you can see, this is a trading view chart. Uh, it's industry standard to have trading view and we can go ahead and use it. These are the time scales. So if you're day trading, you might wanna use a one hour or a four hour chart like this, just to see that if you're dollar cost averaging, a one day or a one week chart is gonna be a lot better for you. Now you can right click and reset the chart if it ever gets a little bit weird. You can also use log scales. Uh, if you're looking over longer time frames. you wanna see longer time frames. Um, in terms of the structure of the prices. You can also change the scale right here. You can zoom in and out like this. And then you have the drawing tools right here. So we can change the type of chart. We have a candlestick chart. We can go to a line chart if we want. Go back to candles. These are all of the different indicators right here. So if you wanna put moving averages on, then you can see them here. You can just click on them once and then it goes on the chart. Click again, you put another moving average on. So I've got a few right here that you can see. I can cross them out to delete them all together, or I can just toggle them on and off with the eye icon right here. And you should be able to see them all either go on or off. So if they're all out, there are no moving averages, and then I can put them back and you can see they reappear on the chart. Any indicator that you want, just go to the settings and you can manipulate the settings. So if I wanna change a moving average to let's say 100 period, and I just wanna change the style because I can't see it too well, um, change the color scheme and everything. Now I can see that a lot better. And that's the 200 uh, period moving average, which in this case is a 200 week moving average because we're on the week chart. If I take that down to a day and then reset, this is now a 200 day moving average as you can see. And we have the, uh, the price chart right here. Now, if you want to draw on the chart, brush tool is very good. So you can just make some brushes. Gonna make this a little bit thicker. 
and change the settings so you can see this. Now we can also draw trend lines as well, the trend line tool up here, if we go to the right, you can draw a trend line freely any way that you want, as you can see, or what you can do is go to the ray tool, horizontal ray, and that will just essentially uh, give you a horizontal support and resistance line on the chart like this, as you can see. Um, and if you want to learn way more about using charts, trading, support and resistance, everything like that, I'll leave some trading tutorials in the description. Uh, I'll leave the crypto course linked as well down in the description. Uh, it has 300 videos on trading strategies, how to trade, how to input different orders and get the best prices. So if you want to take it to the next level, I'll leave the crypto course link down, down in the description as well. If you want to buy and sell crypto, you have to input the order on the screen, which I'll show you. So firstly, we can go to the spot market, which is where you buy, hold and own this. So the spot market is the normal market. Go to market order and then press how much you want to buy. So if you want to spend $100 or 100 USDT, then we can do that and we press buy BTC. We cannot choose the price that we pay here. This is a market order. And so what happens is the system goes up and finds the cheapest Bitcoin on the offer, which is currently this price, and it will buy that for us. So we get that price. We don't choose it. If that price changes, gets better or worse, we just get the best price when we press the button and we can choose how much we spend, but we don't know what the price is. It just gives us the best price. Opposite for the sell side, if you want to sell an amount of BTC, let's say you want to sell 0.005 BTC, just press sell and it will sell at the best market price, which will be down here, the best bid, which is this bid right here. That's the you know, highest bid, and so it will sell to the highest bidder. Now, if we want a bit more granularity over our trades, what we can do is press a limit order. So we'll go over to limit, and now you can choose the price that you pay for Bitcoin. So let's say we are a buyer, and we don't want to pay up, so we don't want to um, pay this price. We want to get a bit of a cheaper price and come down here. So let's just click on this one, 22734, and if we click on it, it should populate that in the uh, price chart right here. So if we click it again, you can see it populates different amounts as you can see. Um, so what we can do is now press that order as a limit. This will be the maximum that we pay and then we can choose how much Bitcoin that we want to buy. Because our limit order is the maximum price that we're willing to pay, it can work out what the volume is of USDT that we're actually going to trade. So we're not going to trade straight away with a limit order. We'll put our order on the screen along with these guys bidding a little bit lower. Um, but if the price gets down there, then we will trade and we can see how much it's going to cost us. We can press buy BTC in that instance. It's going to come over here. Now, if you haven't traded yet, your order will be open and untraded. And you can see all the different types, uh, the information of the trade right here. If you come to the right hand side, you should be able to edit or cancel that trade before it trades. So if you have a an order in of 20,000 and the price is 22, it's gonna be working for you until you either cancel it right here or the price gets to where you want. And it's the exact opposite for selling. So if you want to trade an amount of Bitcoin that you want to sell, you need to put the price in. Now, if you put a limit order in that's down here, that's actually cheaper than the mid price, you'll get the best offer, you'll get the best price or the best bid whenever you press it. If your offer is a little bit higher up here, then again, your order will be up there waiting to be traded and you can put an amount of Bitcoin that you want in and you can see that it's gonna work out how much dollars, how many dollars you get for when you sell. So a limit order just gets a price that you want. You can either put it in lower if you're a buyer or higher if you are a seller, um, but you don't have to. If you put a limit order down here, it's just gonna trade at the best price for you and all your trades will be down here, the information of them, the price, and you can cancel them or edit, edit them at any time on the right-hand side. KuCoin also offers margin trading, which is where you can borrow either dollars or another asset to buy and sell it with leverage, or you can borrow the asset to actually sell, sell more of it. So go short the asset if you think the price is coming down. I don't recommend margin leverage, especially for beginners, but here's how it works. So uh, you can leverage up to five times your capital. So as an example, if you have $1,000, you can take a well, $4,000 loan and make it up to $5,000. Now your $1,000 collateral there is essentially to fund losses. If you're levering up to 5X, then a 20% move is gonna wipe out your collateral. If you have $1,000, you have a $5,000 position, 20% move to the downside, 
is a thousand and all of your collateral is wiped out. So you can make more and you can definitely lose more on that leverage. Here's how it works. So we can set up a cross margin account. You can auto borrow. This means that you can actually just input your orders right here and KuCoin will go and borrow money from the markets on KuCoin uh, at the best rate. So we'll show you that as I'll show you that as well. You can press auto borrow or you can actually go and just borrow in the borrow markets first and then go and trade. So as an example, let's say you have the volume here, you can see you're opening a long position of around uh, 1,135. Now, what you would do is go and borrow so we can come over to the borrow market so if you go to the earn section and then lending and borrowing this is the market for margin and leverage on kucoin so if you wanted to borrow us dollar tether you can actually see the daily interest rate right now which is you know a few percent as an annualized figure so not very much right so it's fairly cheap to uh, borrow for right now these interest rates can change a lot though depending on market conditions so always keep an eye on that so what you can do is um, just set that up as auto borrow. So let's say you wanna take a $2,000 position like that, um, and you will only put a certain amount down. You have more assets than you actually had before. So you can either borrow that US dollar tether directly uh, and have that in your account, or you can actually choose right what your leverage is. So as we can see here, how much leverage do I want? Do I wanna take out all the leverage or just what do I want to borrow a little bit, maybe two times what I'm putting in, and you can change that here. I'll just press cancel, but it's up to 5X, so you can borrow 4X what you have, making 5X, um, or you can set that any way that you want, and you can press auto borrow. And so if you're putting in a position of, let's say, 05, which is 1,100, you'll actually only be putting uh, 500 towards that if you're using 2X, and the rest you're going to be borrowing from the market. Now, you always have to pay off the loan, of course. Um, now, what you can do is sell out some of your profits. If you have pr profits to sell back the loan, that reduces your margin, reduces your leverage because you've now paid off some of it. And in this section, as you can see, in the borrow and loan section, which is right here uh, in the borrow section, you will see essentially your um, account debt ratio. Now, if this gets down to a certain threshold, essentially you're losing money, um, then you will have some limits placed on your account. You won't be able to take uh, some money out. You won't be able to take new leverage, right? So this debt ratio is important right here. Um, if it gets down too low, they will essentially only let you close positions instead of open more ones. They'll only let you reduce leverage and not um, put up leverage, right? So um, you can read all of this and get a, a, a kind of wider understanding of it down in the FAQs um, on KuCoin. As I said, link in the description to find out more. But this lets you leverage up your trading and put less down and have a wider position um, than you would otherwise have. KuCoin is very famous for its trading bots and I'll give you an overview of them now. I'll show you on the phone as it's a little bit of a cleaner layout trading bot up here and then you can click into these to learn a little bit more about them and how they work and how to set them up i'll show you dca bot down at the bottom dollar cost average bot we'll go to next and then we can set the bot up so i want to buy bitcoin choose the asset right here that you want to buy every let's say every week confirm how much do you want to invest 100 press ok now you do need assets in your trading bot account so you need to forward them over to there you can also go to advanced settings and choose the maximum amount that you want this bot to run for. And then the profit target, which is where it actually sells out. Uh, once the target is reached, notify and continue to DCA, or once the target is reached, notify and sell all positions. I wouldn't want to be selling a position that I'm dollar cost averaging in, but you might. Um, so you can create that exactly how you want. Press create, and then that just runs for you. You can set up multiple DCA bots. Another type of bot is smart rebalance, as you can see here. So what you can do if you press next, is set up a portfolio of assets. So maybe you wanna get exposure to a certain part of the market, GameFi, DeFi, as you can see. So create now, it sets you up with these four assets. Now you can take them away, just press X. So if you don't want link, you can withdraw that. You can add it back though. So we'll go to search for all and then add link back. Press confirm selected and it links it back. Now you can weight these by equal weight. So 25% each or by market cap where it puts more money towards the bigger market caps. Or you can just literally just press here and choose how much that you want each of them to be. And what it will do is essentially go and buy them. And then you have a bot with you know exposure to DeFi, essentially. You can choose the max total investment right here that you want. Uh, put that in. 
or just use the slider and the options right here, as you can see, auto rebalance. So you can actually set this um, to 28 days or just set it off. So if you don't want the, the bot to rebalance them and keep them in the percentage that you had them before, you just kind of want to create an ETF and say, I want to put like a thousand dollars in each and that's it or whatever, then you can do that. The bot doesn't have to rebalance. Rebalance is when it's going to try and keep those within the percentage that you started it at. So if one goes up, it will sell some and maybe buy another. Um, so you might not want it to do that. You might just want to create like an ETF, right? Like a basket. And so you don't need it to rebalance, but you can choose that, set it up with these options and press create. But you can see all of the different bots right here. And like I said, I've got a video specifically on KuCoin box, which I will link in the description. KuCoin also offers futures trading and I'll give you an overview of that platform. Now we come to derivatives. Now futures light is a very simple platform where you can just essentially go long or short, essentially betting on the price either going up or down, and that's pretty much it. For Futures Classic, it's more of a complete futures trading platform, so I'll show you this. So as we know, we have the trade screen in the order book here, as in the spot market as well. The difference with futures is that we're not trading the underlying asset. We're not buying and holding Bitcoin. We are essentially taking either a long or short position on the price of Bitcoin. Long, you're hoping the price goes up. If you're short, you're hoping the price goes down. So you can close out your position lower and essentially make the profit on the price coming down. So what we can do is click here. There's two ways you can fund positions on uh, KuCoin, USDT margin is where you're using US dollar tether as your margin to open futures trades. You can use leverage when you trade futures. So you can put $1,000 on, open a trade worth $5,000. That's the leverage that you're using. And you're using US dollar tether to margin that position as your collateral to pay for any losses. Coin margin is where you're using the actual underlying crypto asset as your collateral. So you can put Bitcoin on here, $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, use that collateral as um, the collateral that you're using to fund any positions and cover any potential losses. You can't lose more than you put in, um, but you can lose all of it. Like I said, if you've got a $1,000 position with 5x leverage, 20% um, loss, you're completely wiped out. So please be careful. I don't recommend leverage or margin, um, but I'll just show you how it works. So we can choose the Bitcoin perpetual contract. So now we are taking either long or short positions on the price of BTC. Now you can see the market index price. These are the prices of the contract itself. So uh, futures in crypto are a little bit different because they are perpetual. The price of the futures contract can actually get away from the underlying spot market price of Bitcoin sometimes. And so what happens is there's this thing called a funding rate. So this funding rate is like an incentive for traders to make sure that the futures price of Bitcoin, which we can see here, stays as in line with the spot price as it can, because otherwise it will get completely out of control. And then it's just, you know, it's not a market that you can trade at that point. So as you can see, the, the current funding rate right now is positive. So you can click here. It says when the funding rate is positive, longs pay shorts. So if you are going long here, if you are taking a long position in Bitcoin, hoping the price can go up, you will have to pay this funding rate, which is plus 0.01%. Now, I believe there are three funding rates usually. Do check the settings or the specific uh, settings on KuCoin because there are usually more than one funding a day. So it's 0.01. Let's say there are three fundings a day, taking up to 0.03 as a daily rate. That would be around 10 or 11% as an annual interest that longs are paying shorts right now. So if you wanna take a long position, you have to factor that into your positions. That's very normal for every single futures trading platform. This can change, the funding rate changes dependent on supply and demand in the market. Now, if this is negative, you can see shorts pay longs. So let's say uh, this is negative and you have a long position, you will actually be, actually be getting this funding rate. So you will be earning that funding rate from uh, short traders in that example. So sometimes it can work in your favor, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends. When most people are long, um, pushing the price of the futures up, that's when it discourages more longs and encourages shorts to bring the futures price that back into what it should be. So just check that out from when you're opening positions. And as we can see here on the order side, we can look at our leverage and sort this out. So we can do that right now. Now, when we trade futures, we aren't buying and selling anything. We're just taking a long position buying or a short position selling the actual price 
of the contract itself. We're not buying and selling Bitcoin, we're just taking a position on the price. So as we can see here, um, we, do, we do sort this leverage out so we can click this edit button, choose how much leverage that we wanna take. 20X leverage, 10X leverage, don't, don't recommend this at all. Um, please buy, beware with leverage, it's extremely risky and I don't recommend it, but we can all trade as we want. So yeah, 5X leverage right here, and we can choose the last price. So the last price is 22,729 as you can see, and the amount of BTC that we wanna trade, put that in. So the amount of BTC, let's say um, half a Bitcoin, right? So we want our position, our actual uh, you know, top level position size, we want that to be around 11,000 bucks, call it $10,000. Um, so now we think, well, how much leverage do we want to use? So if we just come down here, we can see how much real assets we would need to fund this position. So to fund this position on 5x leverage, um, currently you can see the cost. So that's the actual cost. The actual amount of dollars we need to tie down is around 2,287 in this case. Now watch when I put the leverage up, you can see the amount we're just gonna turn this down so it allows us. You can see the amount of dollars that I have to put down is less. And so the uh, top, top level position amount, the amount that you're actually gonna open the position for stays the same. The amount of leverage you're using just means you can put either less down or more down. No leverage, I would need to put the entire amount down and fund that position. So yeah, leverage, as I said, it exacerbates price movements. If you have 5X leverage, a 20% move will wipe out all of your collateral. And so you can choose this to whatever you want. Now, take profit, stop loss. When you are using leverage or trading futures, many traders only trade futures short term. It's not very good for long term. It's you know ridiculous for long term investing. You would never use it. This is for short term trades. So TPSL, TPSL of long. I'm gonna skip this. Take profit, stop loss. So let's say that my entry position is 22 uh, 16 right here. Where is our stop loss? You can choose an amount of dollars that it stops out at. So let's say 21,000. And then the take profit is 24,000. So what this would do when you enter a long position here, it would enter one long position here. It would enter this amount. So your top position is 11,000. We know that we have to put down $1,900 to fund the position. Um, and then the stop loss is 21,000. So if the price gets down to 21,000, the order will sell out and, and solidify a loss for us. It would take that loss for us. The reason being, you don't wanna get liquidated. And so you must understand where is your liquidation price if the price moves um, and you know where that is, you want your stop loss to be higher than that. And then the take profit, you don't have to put that in, but if you've done some TA and you know where your take profit is, you can put that in. This gets very complicated. Um, I'm going to leave it for these specific futures trading videos, which goes into it in granular detail about how to put stop losses in, how to work out where it should be um, and everything like that. I have an entire futures trading section in the crypto course, got 50 plus videos that go through it step by step. So I recommend that if you wanna trade futures. I've got some other free videos down in the description linked as well. KuCoin Lending lets you lend out your assets to margin and leverage traders on the platform. Like we've seen with margin and futures trading, you can come to earn crypto lending and then lend, and it shows you the uh, the rates that you can get. For US dollar tether now, you're getting an annualized rate of around 3% or so. This changes dramatically based on supply and demand. It's an open market on KuCoin. Leverage traders are paying you interest um, to lend them the dollars that they're leveraging up. So that's that. You can see for Bitcoin, it's a bit lower. Annualized rate around 0.73%. You can put in the amount that you want to lend. So let's do dollars, $1,000. Now you, you can choose these terms. If you wanna tie up the dollars for seven days only, choose this. If you're happy to uh, tie it up for anywhere from 14 to 28 days, you might get better rates. Uh, and then you can actually put an offer out. So let's say you wanna lend out a thousand and you want your daily interest to be um, you know, 0 .0, 0 0.014, your offer will go on here. Now that's a bad offer because there's actually cheaper rates out there and so you know, you won't, you won't get filled at that level. But what you can do is just leave this blank and it will go and get the best rate for you. And then you can lend that US dollar tether that will be tied up for this time. Although margin and leverage traders can actually pay back early. And so what happens is you can auto renew this. You can see auto lend. 
you can auto lend it. And so essentially you're just uh, lending out consistently to margin and leverage traders over time at the best going rate. And so that's how you would do it. Um, so this isn't like FTX, what they were doing. Uh, they were using Genesis and uncollateralized lending. This is collateralized by assets on the platform from those lenders. However, there are still risks here, including um, you know, maybe the system goes down, something happens, and certainly putting your assets on a centralized exchange has risks as well. So take all those into account before using any sort of lending or borrowing service in crypto. If you want to get started on KuCoin, link in description to see any current trading or deposit offers that they have. Also, the crypto investor course is much more in depth. If you want to get more pro, that link down there as well. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.